Sports News Conference at the NFO Convention. My name is Phil Allen. I help get together the radio programs for the NFO. I'll introduce the staff people from National Farmers because we want you to know that we'll be available to help you get the news out to your audiences and your readers. Uh, most of us uh, from National Farmers are standing along this wall. Uh, I'll start at the far back of the room. That's Miss Baker, Colleen Baker, who does the artwork on the NFO Reporter. And the gray suit is Devon Woodland, the president of National Farmers. Gail Penfold is the guy in the blue shirt. He's a recording technician. Don Mack is head of the radio division. And the guy in the green jacket is Arlo Jacobson, who is editor of the NFO Reporter. There's another one around here, Bill Smith. I don't see him right now. He's the guy with the Humphrey Bogart suit with the chalk stripes. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, take all the time you want and ask all the questions you wish. Now I present Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization. First, let me say that I'm happy to be here in Louisville, and we're certainly happy to have you here with us. I'm Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization based in Corning, Iowa. I farm and ranch in southeast Idaho. We operate a family farm there of about 400 acres of irrigated ground and run about 200 head of uh, cattle. Uh, before we talk about specifics, uh, as far as the convention is concerned, you have the printed material, so I must refer to it. I think we need to talk about agriculture in general and recognize what's happening on the national scene as far as that industry is concerned. First of all, we must recognize as uh, American citizens that agriculture is the number one industry in America. It is the largest single industry. It has the largest single impact on this country of any industry that we have. There are about 2.4 million farm units in America compared to some 6 million 20 years ago. Those 2.4 million farm units represent about $1.1 trillion in capital investment. They employ approximately 23 million people in agriculture or agriculture-related jobs, which is approximately 25% of the labor force in America. So they become extremely important. They are vitally important as far as the international balance of trade goes. The largest contributor to that trade balance. We have been able to maintain our efficiency and productivity over all of these years, perhaps equal to or above any other industry in America. For example, in 1960, we fed ourselves as an individual farmer and rancher and approximately 33 other people. Today, we feed 78. So we have increased our productivity uh, tremendously. During that same period of time, the American people has uh, had a decrease in disposable income spent for food. In 1960, they were spending 20 percent, and today they're spending 14 to 14.5. So we recognize the achievements of agriculture as a national industry. And in spite of all of those accomplishments, agriculture is faced today with a situation unequaled since the days of the Great Depression. We're seeing liquidations, we're seeing uh, farm sales, either voluntary or involuntary, unequaled since those days. We have had a 17-fold increase in voluntary and involuntary liquidations, 1982 over 1981. This will be the third consecutive year of decline in net farm income. And as we take a look at those figures, it becomes somewhat frightening when we recognize it's the lowest since the USDA today began keeping records in this century. We know that net farm income is projected at approximately 
1982 versus 1979. Net farm income. Now these figures are astonishing figures when you recognize the decline in net farm income and an increase of 20% during that same period of time of production costs. And perhaps the most concrete evidence of what is happening in the rural communities is that liquidation. There are 30% of those who own and operate farms today who are in deep, deep financial trouble. FHA speaks of uh, increases in delinquencies equal to approximately 38% of their outstanding loans. So agriculture, even though it's maintained its productivity, its uh, high technology, it has become the victim of its own circumstance. And this convention will be dealing with that issue and how to take corrective steps to protect the most vital industry in America that has provided and served the American people so well under the structure that we now know it. We'll be spending time on commodity programs. We'll be dealing with those programs and how uh, to relate to the market with uh, sufficient and equal strength of those who form and are, in essence, the market. We'll be dealing basically in our business meetings with dairy, all aspects of dairy, grains, all aspects of both grains and meats. And so we welcome you to all phases of our convention. The meetings will be public, and hopefully because of that experience, we'll be able to relate to each other being interdependent as producers and consumers. Okay, I'm open for questions. Anything you'd like to pursue? Yes. Mr. Woodland, there's been a lot of talk recently, especially in the last week or two weeks, about the possibility of export subsidies for American farm exports to put them on a more even keel with uh, agricultural exports coming out of Western Europe and the EEC countries. Uh, what are your feelings on this, and do you feel these subsidies are needed for American agricultural exports? Uh, you're making reference to Senator Dole and his visit abroad. Uh, they were somewhat hopeful when they went. They were disappointed when they came back because uh, it became very apparent that it may result in a trade war. Uh, those were some of the parts of discussion, which there's no winners in such a situation. And uh, there's no question about what marks would deteriorate and producers would be hurt. Uh, as far as subsidies for the export programs, the European common market countries do subsidize their producers. They subsidize, uh, subsidize them uh, between 9 and $11 billion annually. When the American farmer goes into the world markets, he goes in there and competes with governments. Uh, our government gives no protection to producers on export markets. They need that. They need that if that's going to be the, the, uh, the main markets that we uh, become involved in serving. I'm not sure that ex export markets are really the answer. We have increased our exports in the last 10 years from $7 billion to $44 billion. And at the same time, farm debt has increased 400 percent. So our export markets must have something else, and that is there must be a price on those goods you export, whether they be domestic or in the international markets. Uh, we can't minimize their importance, but certainly uh, the salvation for the American farmer is not in an export market. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. The farmer is not power, powerless. He's only powerless in the political arena because he represents such a small percentage of the voting public. But he becomes all powerful when you consider the tool he has. Uh, food, the most vital uh, product in the world, and he uh, becomes the major supplier. He supplies 50 percent of all the food that goes uh, to the underdeveloped countries of the world, 50 percent of all the food that goes for consumption in the third world countries comes from this country. 
He owns and controls all the food and fiber in this country at one time. He does have strength in his production, and therein lies his salvation, certainly not in the political arena because of his uh, being a minority in that phase of uh, government. In the talk with Locke, you mentioned that, that he was very polite, but it kept coming back that he was subject to budget cuts, and that was the bottom line. The bottom line was what he was subject to. How can you fight that? The only way that can be fought is at the marketplace directly with those who buy. As far as the political process, uh, we as an organization have lost uh, faith in that approach. We do maintain a Washington office whose responsibility is to watch legislation. We uh, are not optimistic about getting anything from a, uh, a legislative process. We don't believe that farmers ought to go to the federal treasury for farm income. They ought to go to the marketplace and deal with those as a first handler and their price. And the only way that you can price that is negotiating contracts with that handler based on cost production because you have what he needs to operate his plant, his mill, his facility. My last question is we're in a tobacco belt. Uh, Burley is very important to the state. Uh, any comments on the price support reduction? We have not got involved in the tobacco as an organization. We do have members that are uh, uh, tobacco producers. We confine our thrust to the basic commodities uh, and some miners. Uh, the price support program, of course, uh, unfortunately, was is now a minimum when, in theory, uh, excuse me, is now a maximum when, in theory, it was to be uh, a base under and lift up. But the price support program has uh, has not served the purpose that it was intended for. It has uh, seemed to cap and put ceilings on markets rather than being a support. Yes, sir. 50 percent of the 50 cent assessment uh, imposed by U.S. EU and various farmers to reduce production. Will it work? We opposed that program the time that it was uh, talked about. We proposed a program that we felt would be more successful. We think it's unfair because not all dairy producers are selling uh, through their structured market to the government. And those that are selling uh, through their structure to the government ought to be the ones that pays the bill and not those who are not using the government programs. The way to uh, combat that is to move the market up to a level whereby it will be unproductive to sell to the government program. Today, the consumer market is being shortened because the government program is more attractive than is the consumer market. And there are those that are moving directly into government storage and neglecting the consumer market. Yes. So when you're talking of those that move directly in, you're speaking of uh, milk cooperative companies. Those that use the government program as a storage facility for an aging facility, they ought to uh, pay the bill rather than the farmers in general that are using the consumer market. Now there's legislation now in Congress that's tacked on to uh, the appropriations bill introduced by Senator Hayakawa that would increase the level of milk solids and fluid milk that goes on the market. This is something they've done in California for several years. Uh, consumer groups are saying, well, it'll increase the price of milk. Consumers can't buy it. Uh, farmers are saying, yeah, but it'll take uh, about 8% of the uh, surplus milk solids off the market. When we now have a 10% surplus, we'll leave it with a 2% surplus. But a lot of the cooperatives, a lot of the processors are fighting it because they'll have to restructure the, the way they pay the farmers. Butter fat, they'll have to do it on milk solids, not fat. Uh, what, what are your feelings on this? I'm not familiar with that bill, but I do know this that uh, the American people have a bargain in foods that they purchase in this country. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in 1960 they were paying 20%, today they're paying about 14.5% for foods. Uh, to make agriculture profitable, they would uh, need. Okay, according to the, the uh, Chase econometric study, an increase of 1.6%. Out of that 15.5%, uh, farmers are getting about 5% of that. And that would increase it then 1.6%, uh, which would increase the total disposable income by the American people from 14.5 to figure it up, whatever that uh, 1.6 on that would be, 16.1, uh, which is still the lowest in the world. The American people, if they understood how vital this industry is to them and what it's done for them, they would stand up and demand that agriculture be given 
a fair price. Because farmers and ranchers as a whole have looked for everyone else to do something for them. We've embraced the, the federal farm programs for many, many years. We have participated in the Board of Trade, the Merck. We have worked with the free market system. We have worked with export markets, and the bottom line is they have all failed to deal with the real issue, and that's to increase farm income to avoid liquidation. And so he has used every program except one, and that's one that he has devised, that he has structured himself, and that's collective bargaining. And every segment in society that has and is using it has been able to protect their economic interests. And agriculture, too, must use that principle for their own good and for the good of the country. Will farmers organize? That's a question that yet remains to be answered. My feeling is yes. They're closer today than they were yesterday, and they'll be closer tomorrow than they are today. There were six million 20 years ago. Today there is four and a half. Tomorrow, there will be less. The next day, perhaps less. At some point, they will, and they will use collective bargaining to protect their interests. I would hope that the structure we now have and know in agriculture is wise enough, alert enough to do it, that the American people don't pay the price of our neglect with higher food costs, as your major corporations have the ability to price goods. Would they strive? Would the American farmer strike? Absolutely. What's your feeling on Secretary Block's painting and tiling program? I would need to know more about it and how it's going to work and operate. Uh, I know this that uh, I know this that if in fact uh, that program is initiated, the farmer has been paid through a loan program once for it. He would be less inclined, less inclined to demand uh, uh, a price for that because he's been paid once. And my fear is it may have a tendency, if farmers are not alert, to weaken the market rather than strengthen it because he would be inclined to take less than perhaps his needs for that second sale of the same commodity. There's only one problem in agriculture. Only one problem. And it isn't legislation. It isn't uh, exports. It's simply farmers need more protection at the marketplace. They need to have strength there so they can extract, if you will, from the marketplace, from that first buyer, income sufficient to reduce, recover costs to produce. So it boils down farmers must make a profit. And in so doing, then you'll see the land stay in the hands of the private ownership. You'll see it transfer from father to son, but there's no incentive today for that transfer to take place. You told the organization the best kept secret in agriculture. Just how are you going about uh, getting the secret out? That's one of the biggest challenges we have is letting people really know what we have as an organization and a service that we can perform. Uh, we must expand our field contact work. In my opinion, it must be a one-on-one -on -one sitting down and talking to that must be expanded. Uh, we are preparing now to uh, launch that type of an effort. There must be county structures, there must be staff and membership, uh, a concerted effort to reach <laughs> the uneducated farmer as far as the NFO and our programs are concerned. It must be done. How much time are you allotting to accomplish? I think uh, we, have, uh, we are in the middle of a very opportune time. Perhaps uh, uh, ideally, uh, uh, it could have been uh, started a year ago, and I think perhaps we have another year, perhaps two, uh, that are going to be very, very critical as far as farmers and ranchers are concerned. Yes? Uh, you said you're going to place your faith in government programs, given uh, the circumstances. Does the NFO support, support prices, target prices? 
The government does have some responsibility to agriculture. The government uh, does negotiate, does make available international trade agreements to the major grain companies. The government has the ability to turn on, turn off export programs. So they have some responsibility. Agriculture ought not alone bear the responsibility of a strategic reserve in foods in the country. And so because of that responsibility of government, yes. Ideally, the time would come when farmers and ranchers could extract from the marketplace income sufficient uh, without going to the federal treasury. They can't do it today. Uh, with strength in uh, bargaining, it can be done. Ideally, that's what we would prefer. The fact that the subsidies, again, as we were talking about before, in the talks, the trade talks going on in Europe, there were a number of veiled threats from American officials about dumping the uh, dairy products, excess dairy products, onto the world market. What's your feeling of that? Well, those that are in government storage uh, perhaps wouldn't have uh, a dramatic effect on domestic market. Uh, it would certainly be the commodity to use if, in fact, they want to start a trade war and make a point. But uh, uh, it just appears to me that in any trade war, uh, nobody wins. Well, domestically, is it something that you feel that can be done with that surplus? Well, we know what has been done within the last year, where that surplus has been given out through uh, uh, welfare agencies distributed out through uh, the poor and the needy in the country. Uh, we know that the government itself has passed up opportunities to sell uh, storage uh, milk, whether it be in powder, uh, cheese, butter, whatever. Uh, unbeknown to us why, they're, uh, they, they've refused to make some sales. But uh, that's the way it is. Yes, we will be adding extra staff. Uh, the uh, economics of the thing will dictate, uh, of the organization will dictate how strong we can become as we prepare for this type of a, an activity. Uh, we would hope to sufficiently cover the United States with staff that within a 12 month period we can reach most county areas and county structures. We now have approximately 600 staff that operates within the structure of the organization. Uh, I would think uh, that if we increased it another 200 uh, plus, that it would adequately serve the needs. Now, I know that in the past, uh, mm -hmm. especially within, within maybe 10 years ago, uh, NFO was kind of treated like the red headed stepchild in agriculture. There was a lot of strife between uh, NFO and different other farm organizations. Farm Bureau, just to name one, <coughs> they were incorporated uh, in some of the other milk marketing outfits, just to name some of the others. Has that toned down a bit, uh, either one reason or another, or was that uh, mainly caused by individual members than it was by uh, one organization or the other? Our history was filled with activity, of course, that you're familiar with that I won't apologize for. It was important at that time. It was a way to rally people around a cause. Uh, in any movement of people, you must appeal to the emo emotions. And uh, the emotional phase can only last a period of time, and then you must move on to something more concrete that they can relate to over a longer period of time. We're in that second phase of the organization where we appeal to the intellect of people. We review and uh, 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 go through our programs with them whereby they can relate to them uh, and see benefits in it for them. And so uh, uh, we have a little different complexion today because we uh, are in a serious business. As I said, agriculture is the largest single business in America and it can't be taken lightly. And so we, uh, we are one of the major uh, corporations, if you will, the industry agriculture. Any other questions? Brief assessment of the Reagan administration. Um, he talks about the uh, 
the trickle down, we think perhaps uh, we feel the effects of the tinkle down. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>